Welcome to a voyage of discovery and awareness of the richness, the diversity, and the often surprising nature of living with the land. Our journey begins as dramatic and sudden changes are sweeping over the land. The approaching storm may seem violent and destructive to us, but to nature it's a new beginning in the cycle of life. Beneath the surface of the land, roots trap water from the flowing mud, extracting precious nutrients and minerals. These elements, when combined with sunlight, create the diverse living systems of our planet. One of those living systems is the rainforest, home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich and productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicines, and other elements essential to our lives. In the desert, Nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful, living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. Of all the forces at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use, and sometimes overuse, of the land. In our search for more efficient ways to grow food, we often fail to realize the impact of our methods. Today, we're learning to live with the land, discovering better ways to grow food that will assure both human and environmental well-being. How will we meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Here at Epcot, we're learning to reduce the need for pesticides by using natural predators like ladybugs and wasps to control pests. In Japan, we're learning that by adding composted leaves and other plant material to our soil, we can reduce the need for fertilizers. Farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. Welcome to our living laboratories, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee and rice, are well known around the world. Others, like the jackfruit, fluted pumpkins, and dragon fruit growing here, represent the vast number of lesser known tropical plants. As we learn more about these crops, we discover that many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. For instance, the fluted pumpkin thrives in the poorest soil conditions of Africa. With its edible seeds and leaves, the pumpkin could become an important staple for areas where other crops don't grow easily. The unique looking dragon fruit 
is actually a member of the cactus family. The fruits are high in vitamin C, rich in antioxidants, and have a light, sweet taste. The fruit originated in Mexico or Central America, but is already becoming popular in Asia. It could become a source of important nutrients for people living in many areas of the world. These and many other lesser known crops may one day be as popular as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. When we mention farming, you probably don't think of fish. But fish farming, or aquaculture, is an innovative way to increase harvests, protect wild fish populations, and produce a healthy crop. Like these sturgeon, that grow to over 300 pounds. Now that's a lot of caviar. Tilapia, bass, and catfish are three popular crops raised by fish farmers around the world. Most are grown in open ponds but innovative recirculation systems like ours can conserve water and improve production. More than 200 different species of aquatic animals and plants have been successfully farmed. Even these American alligators can be successfully raised in controlled environments like ours. Nearly half of all fish consumed worldwide is now raised on farms, making aquaculture an important part of our efforts to produce a bountiful harvest and protect natural resources. Here at the land, we grow about 5,000 pounds of fish each year, many of which are featured in restaurants around Walt Disney World. This greenhouse is full of some of the best ideas for improving plant yields. Disease and pests are two of the biggest problems facing farmers around the world. By careful selection and cross-breeding, we can grow crops like these sunflowers and winter melons that are more resistant to pests and diseases. Scientists have even been able to breed plants that can flourish in marginal areas where water and nutrients are in short supply. The result of these efforts is higher yields with less impact on the environment. These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like the ones you see help to increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. We're growing these nutritious sweet potatoes above ground. This method increases yields, produces larger potatoes, and can be used where rich soil is in short supply. We're growing lettuce using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Here's something you don't see every day. Tomatoes growing on trees. These plants were originally developed by Chinese scientists. Tomato trees live longer and produce many more tomatoes. One of ours lived 16 months and produced over 32,000 fruits. 
Much of the produce you see growing in our greenhouses is served in the restaurants here at the land. The future of agriculture includes some high-flying ideas like the ones you see here. The aquaponics system on your left integrates hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a source of natural fertilizer for the plants and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less resources. In our lab, Epcot scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce higher yielding and better quality plants. These greenhouses represent just a tiny fraction of the work being done worldwide to produce bountiful harvests for our growing population. Around the globe, scientists, farmers, and even backyard gardeners are doing their part to improve the quality and yields of foods that we all rely upon. By working together, we can continue to find innovative ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then will we truly be living with the land.